Assalamu uh, alaikum. I hope you're doing well. Uh, in the name of God, we are going to start our second episode in the linguistics series. This episode is going to be about animal and human language. So uh, let's start uh, with a quote by Noam Chomsky. It says that language is not just words; it's a culture. It's it's a tradition, a unification of a community, a whole history that creates what a community is. It's all embodied in a language. So this code, uh, just like uh, structural, uh, structuralism and post-structuralism, says that through language, through language, we can understand the norms, the traditions, and the culture, the history of uh, of a certain nation. The question here is that. Can we use the language, the, the, the animal language, to understand how they, li how they live their daily life, uh, to understand their uh, culture maybe, their traditions, if they have ones? So I think to, an to answer this question, first we need to know the difference between the language of humans and the language of animals. So, in this lesson, we are going to deal briefly with some of the differences and the properties of both human and animal language. First, we will deal first with the, the reflexivity property. This is a human language property by which human, humans can use language to reflect on the language itself. This is to say, use language to talk about language. For example, in in, a, in, a, in grammar classes, we use English, for example, the language English, to study the English. We use, for example, the language to study the rules of that language. So here we can use language to talk about language. Uh, the second property is the displacement. The displacement. Here is one uh, another uh, human property, is that human, humans can talk about past, can talk about the present, can talk about the future. They can talk about physical, concrete, factual things that we can touch. And they can even talk about something that is metaphysical, abstract, something that we cannot touch, something that is not present in the, in the, in the moment. But on the other hand, animals can only talk about what they interact with in their environment. If, for example, a monkey says uh, so, uh, a, 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 a danger, for example, let's say a snake is going to attack them, he is going to produce some sounds, he is going to communicate to warn the other monkeys to flee and, uh, and run. So, uh, animals can only use language to describe what they interact with, something in the present and something that, he, that they can touch. So this is the placement. Let's move to arbitrariness. Arbitrariness is well defined by uh, Dossier. Uh, so there is no a natural connection. There is no natural connection between the linguistic form. If we're talking about the linguistic form, we're talking about like here in cat. Cat. The linguistic form is uh, of cat is say a t. This is the linguistic form of uh, of cat, for example. So there is no natural connection, there is no a fixed connection between a linguistic form and its meaning. For example, cat, uh, its meaning is a, an animal and the linguistic form is C18, but there is no a connection, a fixed connection. And you can even play with the letters to form other linguistic forms that refer to totally different meanings. For example, cat. We can use those three letters to form act, the verb act, and so on and so forth. We can produce different uh, linguistic form to refer to different meanings. For example, in Arabic, let's make an example of Arabic. Arabic, we say it's qetatun. In French, it's a sha. In, uh, in, in, in English, it's a cat. They refer to the same meaning, but using different linguistic forms. So there is no a fixed uh, relation or connection between the linguistic form and the the, the meaning. Whereas in 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 a, in a, in, a, in a, for for animals, sound or gesture means one meaning. For example, if we have a, a dog, uh, for example, in Morocco, 
uh, if he is barking or it is barking it, it, it sends same message and this message is the same is like just like the same message that a dog in fr French for example in France for example or in United States they like the same so there is a fixed there is a fixed relation between the the sound or the, the, the gesture that an animal produce and the meaning so this is the arbitrariness I will give you an example have you ever played this game it's in your phones for example uh, it's a game that gives you for example here we have four letters and it, it, it you what what your your mission is to produce and to create uh, new meanings using only the, those four letters for example C yes eyes I and so on and so forth so here it shows that there is no a fixed relation there is no fixed relation between the linguistic form and its meaning and they are arbitrary there is arbitrariness and arbitrary relation between them let's move to another property which is the productivity humans or human language is continually developing and many vocabularies are added and created every day uh, to make sure of this, you can go to Oxford Dictionary, for example, and you check how many, uh, like th there are uh, tens or even hundreds of words are added to the dictionary, maybe daily or weekly, monthly or annually. You can check this yourself. Uh, this theory shed light on the flexibility of the human language, and that human can produce new utterances, new expressions, new words, new terms to describe new phenomena and new situations for example in COVID-19 it's a new word that is used or added to the dictionary of many languages dictionary to describe new phenomena so we produce uh, new utterances to describe new uh, new uh, new phenomena and situations whereas uh, whereas animals the, uh, the, 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 the language of animals is fixed and here we have some some processes like clipping, coinage, burrowing, blending, and derivational process. Those are some processes to uh, to create new terms and don't worry about them because we are going to deal with them inshallah in the in the word formation video. Let's move to cultural transmission, another property. Here because animals can <coughs> because uh, sorry humans have the capacity to speak uh, different Languages, they can adapt different cultures and acquire different languages. Uh, let's make this uh, easier. If we put a child in, in a, a newborn, for example, in America, if he grows up, he's going to talk, to, to speak um, uh, the American language, which is, which is English. If he is born in Morocco, he's going to speak Arabic or Tamazight or Darija. So here we have this adaptation. Humans have this capacity to learn language, whereas uh, whereas uh, animals inherit it, inherit the language, inherit the communicative language, be it a verbal or nonverbal, from the parents. The same example: if you put put a a bird in in a newborn bird in a, in America and another in Morocco, they are going to speak the same language because it is not it is it is inherited it is inherited in their uh, it is inherited and innate they don't have this capacity of learning so cultural transmission that we humans can adapt the cultures the different cultures and acquire different languages let's move to the uh, last uh, property which is uh, duality Duality that is human humans have two levels of articulation. It's about that humans have two levels of articulation. The first level is the physical level by which we produce sounds. So here, the first level is the physical level. Here, the physical level, which is responsible for producing sounds. Here we have another level, the second level, which is the meaning level, which is responsible for producing the meanings. Here, uh, we have this duality by which, by physical, by the physical, uh, physical level, by uh, 
multiplating or uh, integrating the physical level and the mini level, we produce meaningful speeches and what is called, uh, which, we, which we can call language. So this is the duality that human have two levels of articulation and uh, which is the physical level which produces sounds which then accompanied with meanings using the, the meaning uh, level uh, to produce language. This is the end. Let's make a small review of what we have uh, dealt with. First, first one, the first property is reflexivity that we can talk, use language to talk about language. Displacement, humans can talk about what is present and what is not present, uh, whereas animals can only talk about what is present and what is physical. Arbitrariness, there is no, uh, for, human, uh, there is, for human language, there is no a natural connection, connection. There is no a fixed relation or connection between the linguistic form and the meaning. Uh, this uh, productivity, another property that humans are able to produce different or, let's say, new words, new utterances uh, in their languages, whereas uh, animals, animal language is fixed. Uh, cultural transmission, human can adapt different cultures and acquire different languages, whereas animals uh, inherit uh, their uh, inherent the, the language from their parents. This uh, duality that humans have two levels of articulation, physical, articula uh, physical level and mini level, which uh, altogether produce uh, a meaningful speech.